thank you for being here today uh, for this uh, event. And especially thanks for Alex Sidarenko uh, for once again organizing the event risk management wise for the supervillain from the James Bond movie. Uh, please remember that uh, Amazon and gm and &E in production are the owners of, and this is back to the age old question of what's the impact of a red risk on your plan? It's kind of a very, very large risk register. So uh, from the shipping, the putting on the boat, shipping, the unloading the boat, how you bring it to the depot. So all the steps, all the explosive and the accessories, bow ties, which are going nearer to good or practices. So back to our client, because you can't forget the need of your client uh, when he's got a volcano. So that, that's a lot of money going that way. That's uh, more than half a billion dollar on average. So he's notwithstanding the fact that James Bond is blocking the objective from my client. And for the model, I'm assuming that 60 to 80% of the damage is done to villain's asset because James Bond is also destroying public property. So it shows, uh, like I was saying, Pierce Brosman here is uh, fairly lethal compared to other uh, James Bond, Roger Moore. I uh, see a movie with very few uh, kills in some cases. So um, you've got Bayesian networks, which are fairly powerful uh, There's uh, this, in the Society for Risk Analysis. But uh, people were seeing this as unscientific. So maybe I'm giving myself an edge overall in, on an average confrontation. Uh, there's obviously a, a more mathematical way to take a look at it, and we're going to get back to the formula a little later on. So is it 60% uh, between 60 and 80% chance of having it head on a rig coin, for example? And so this is the value that based on the few cases I have, but now this is relatively narrow because 600 is not a bad number in this case to start having a good idea of the distribution. Uh, so, and I've added two other agents with that. I mean, let's say that it killed three people on, uh, and you get a clearer picture as times evolve of what's the actual spread of the probability for the binomial distribution. Now, uh, NASA is a very serious organization about risk management and they have some fantastic prod open access quantitative risk management literature. Uh, that you can just download from the net, including uh, Bayesian inference for NASA probabilistic risk and reliability assessment analysis. Uh, and, and since you're doing this with Monte Carlo simulation, all the integration is done for you. So you might either there's some mathematical tool you can use, or you can just say it's a 50-50 chance or 60-40% chance as my initial prior uh, and my prior. And non-conjugate is basically when you have uh, information on your prior, but it's not the same distribution than what you're trying to achieve, what you're adding the new data to. It can be used for different applications. There's multiple ways to do those analysis. So I've got two systems that are the same. Uh, if we were doing a very thorough process safety uh, risk assessment, we'd be breaking down all those components by failure mode, evaluating the likelihood of each of them failing. Let's put 5% likelihood failure for that system. So uh, gamma distribution are not always used in um, reliability, but they're easy to update as more information gets in. Uh, we need to make sure though that when you're playing with gamma distribution, you don't have an, an increase decay over time or, or an acceleration of the failure mode. And th this is the, the time between failure, which is my other parameter I need. And at the back, I've got the distribution. And once again, I'm going to show you here is uh, in red my initial data. So it was failing much faster. Um, then I've added the new data. But I don't, and then I combine them basically. So it shows the, the final distribution. I'm going to come to my final distribution. So it's just to reflect the actual cost of bullet from different calibers because your henchman, you don't know which type of bullet they'll be shooting at uh, James Bond. Then uh, we're a good organization. So uh, what I've done is for the cost of the machine, I don't know much about that machine. So the, here's the cost, same type of distribution because there's the advantage of a, a risk alarm. So that will uh, adjust my likelihood of getting hit for a specific year. So basically what it states is that I've got 35.7% chance of being NPV positive in this case. So I have here two sample of the binomial distribution with a 98% likelihood of success. 
So here, I, here it is. I've got the, my, my gamma distribution, and it says that yeah, I've got one uh, ones working uh, uh, as intended because this is the number hour of hours before failure. So that this is where we we're going to start uh, working with base theorem. But at least you see the uh, the the overall model how it is uh, structured, and once again, it's good insight. And let, let's see it visually. Just so it's easier to understand the logic at the back of this. So let's say I've got ten thousand houses. And I've got 10% of that is uh, 8,000. It's quite powerful because um, when you start to have complex causes or you want to understand if there's a, a lot of false positive or false negative um, in a specific case, this will help you navigate it. Uh, let's get back to the theorem here. For So for bullets for James Bond, the numbers are slightly different, but uh, probably that we have a dead James Bond if he's hit by a bullet is equal to... So uh, in this line of work, let's say you're 99% sure that he's going to get hit by a bullet at some point. Uh, we don't think here, we don't have a lot of faith that this will be the way James Bond will go because it's too boring, I guess, for a filmmaker. So probability that James Bond, is, that we have a dead James Bond considering that the machine works is equal to the probability the machine works. So back to our consultant problem. Um, issue here is that James Bond is very hard to kill, being hard to kill. Uh, because we don't have much evidence, even that 0.2% we had to come up with based on what we saw in the movie. So it's something that's worth digging into.